Support Vector Machines Scholastic Video Book Series Part 2 Nonlinear Support Vector Machines ScholasticTutors.webs.com Support Vector Machine SVM algorithms are used in classification. Classification can be viewed as the task of separating classes in feature space. Here is an example. This is a feature space, X1 feature, X2 feature, class blue class, class red class. So we can separate them by using a hyperplane like this, or we can find one like that. We can find like that, like that, or something like that. Basically, it's an optimization algorithm to find out the best separating hyperplane for a linear support vector machine. And now, in this lesson, actually, we looked at linear type SVM in part one of our SVM lesson series. Here, in this lesson, we are going to look at an example like the one below, which is a much more complex example where we have a blue class here and a red class and clearly we can't find a separating hyperplane between the red class and the blue class there is no clear separating hyperplane so how are we going to tackle this problem first of all we will see the vectors we have a blue class and we have a red class. So blue class vectors are 1, 1. This is how you normally represent the feature x1, feature x2. The blue class has a feature x1 equal to 1, feature x2 equal to 1. Second point here, feature x1 equal to minus 1, x2 equal to 1. So similarly, we can represent all the four points in the blue class and all the four points in the red class. 0, 2, 2, 0, so on and so forth. Just two classes. So here we need to find a nonlinear mapping function, phi, which can transform this data into a new feature space where a separating hyperplane can be found. So let's consider the following mapping function, which is a mapping function with original feature vectors, features x1 and x2. And if x1 squared plus x2 squared is greater than or equal to 2, we'll use this part of the function, or you use the second one for the, the other cases. Basically, we have blue class here. The blue class, if you look at the blue class, the values of x1 squared plus x2 squared for blue class is always less than 2. So there will be no transformation for these four points, but those four four points in the red class will be transformed into a different place because the values of x1 squared plus x2 squared is greater than or equal to 2. Any points around here will be transformed into a different place. So when you take the blue class, as we have seen already, there is no change for the blue class because the vectors are uh, in this region, that is x1 squared plus x2 squared is less than 2, so there won't be any change in the vectors or, or the, the coordinates. And for the red class, if you apply the function, as we can see here, the function transformation is x1, x2, 2, 0, coordinates x1 is 2, x2 is 0 for the first vector here. And substitute the values here 6 minus x1, 6 minus 2 plus x1 minus x2. x1, 2 minus x2, 0 to the power 2. This is basically given transfer function. So square it. And 6 minus x2, 6 minus x2 is 0. Plus x1 minus x2, x1 minus x2, x1 is 2, x2 is 0. 6 minus 2, 4, 2 times 2, 4, 4 plus 4, 8. 6 minus 0, 6, 2 times 2, 4, 6 plus 4, 10. So that is the, this is the transformed vector for the original vector 2, 0. 
Similarly, you can do the same for 0, 2, substitute the values, get 10, 8, substitute the values for the third vector, minus 2, 0. So basically, you see that 6 minus x1, 6 minus minus 2, 6 plus 2, minus 2, minus x2, and when you simplify 12, similarly, you simplify down here, get 10. And the last vector also, you get another new feature vector for the original feature vector 0 minus 2. Yeah, these are the vectors after transforming. So earlier we had 2, 0 and it became 8, 10 using the transfer function here. So 2, 0 became 8, 10, 0, 2 became 10, 8, minus 2, 0 became 12, 10, 0 minus 2 became 10, 12. So we can now see clearly there is a region in between the blue class and the red class. The blue class remains here, red class has been transformed into a new place here. So now our problem is a problem related to linear SVM. So we have one class here, another class here, there's a clear separating boundary. So we need to find three or more support vectors. In this case, we have the boundary here, and we can select three of them. For example, from the red class, we can select S1 is 810. From the red class, we can again select S2. 10, 8, and from the blue class, we select this one, is 3, 1, 1. These three are our support vectors, and we use these support vectors to find out the separating hyperplane. So now again, like the one that we did it for the linear SVM, we make a bias actually vectors are augmented with a one as a bias input. So basically our S1 was 810, S2 10, 8, 1, 1. After bias we, we it will become 8, 10, 1. This is the bias added here for calculation purpose and we represent it with the title here S1 title, S2 title, S3 title. And now we need to find three parameters, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, using three linear equations. Alpha 1 times S1 title times S1 title plus alpha 2 times S2 title times S1 title plus alpha 3 times S3 title times S1 title equal to plus 1. This is the positive class. Similarly, S for S2, instead of S1, we have S2 here. We get another equation. And third equation for the negative class S3, S3, S3 here. Our task is to substituting the support vectors into these three equations. And we have these support vectors with, with the augmentation with one here. And we substitute here S1, 8, 10, 1, S1, 8, 10, 1, S2, 10, 8, 1, S1. 8, 10, 1, S3, 1, 1, 1, S1, 8, 10, 1. Similarly, for the second equation, substitute S2s and S1s and S3, and the last one for this equation. Please note that this is for the positive class and this is for the negative class. So there are two classes. And now we need to simplify these equations, basically 8 times 8, 64. 10 times just 100, 1 times 1, 1, 64 plus 100, 164 plus 165, 80, 160, 161, 8, 18, 19. So once you do the simplification for all the three equations, 1, 6, y alpha 1 plus 1, 6, y alpha 2 plus 19, alpha 3 is for the first equation. Similarly, second equation and the third equation, we get these three linear simultaneous equations and simplifying the both three equations we get alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0 
and alpha 3 equal to negative 1.4219 so you can use any method you can use a simple program or just uh, calculate by using manual calculation you or using Kramer's rule okay so now we need to find out the discriminating hyperplane the hyperplane that discriminates the positive class from the negative class is given by this equation w title is equal to sigma of alpha i times si title these are the alphas that we found these are the support vectors that we used so we use three support vectors so we have three alphas so we multiply alphas by the support vectors s1 8 10 1 with the augmentation uh, with a bias here and 10 8 1 plus 1 1 1 alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 we substitute them from the previous slide so we have alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 so then simplify this equation again just multiply by this number with 8 plus this number with 10 plus this number with 1 you get one row second row third row then we need to find out the graphical representation of the hyperplane so how to plot this one we have the w of the hyperplane with the offset b so how to interpret that equation is basically y equal to w x plus b b is the bias or the the offset that we got just now w is equal to 0.125 divided basically what we do here is to normalize this one uh, to get 1 1 and that is the uh, the gradient of this hyperplane and the bias again divided by the same number 0 0.125 and we get the offset minus 10 basically it will go to the point x1 equal to 10.057 so basically this is the hyperplane with a gradient 1 1 and offset minus 10 offset minus 10.057 is to mean that it goes through point x1 equal to 10.057 so therefore our hyperplane with a gradient 1 1 and actually the it goes to the point here this is our discriminating hyperplane for the blue and the red class using the three support vectors s1 s2 s3 so this is the conclusion of the theory part basically this is the expected decision surface of the nonlinear lsvm you can write a simple code to do the same uh, find the discriminating hyperplane this is using MATLAB or similar program that you can use this as a pseudo, you can use this as a pseudocode to write the code and when you run this code you get w dash w hat equal to this one basically this is a bit of approximation there and then once you plot this one you will get the same hyperplane using this uh, simplification these are the vectors this is the summation to calculate alphas and then finally you will get the the high plane here using this equation so let's consider the example x1 x2 equal to minus 1 2 that is a point somewhere here which obviously be a red class but we need to find out whether our algorithms tells that it is a red class this is our blue class we found we get point minus 1 2 here apply the first transformation it is it is actually x1 squared plus x2 squared greater than or equal to 2 region so therefore it applies here and x1 x2 minus 1 2 substitute the values 6 minus x1 6 minus minus 1 becomes 6 plus 1 plus x1 minus 1 minus 2 squared plus 6 minus x2 6 minus 2 plus x1 is equal to minus 1 minus 2 squared 6 1 plus 7 7 times 9 16 2 minus 2 4 plus 9 13 so now we have w so multiply this with the w this is the new feature vector 16 13 multiply w you get 29 so if 29 is greater than the hyperplane so it's approximate this it was 10.057 but we approximately say that if it is greater than 10 uh, basically this point will lie above this line this line is actually x1 plus x2 equal to 10.047 it's approximately 10 so our hyperplane uh, our point after transformation is gone to 16 13 
this is the transformed point. The earlier it was here. When we use this transfer function, it will trans it will get transformed into this point. So it's a very clear classification now. Like even though they were they were very close here, but after the transformation, it is far away from the blue class. So this exactly classifies this into red class. So hence this point belongs to the red class. That is very interesting question here. These two are very close to each other, but after the transfer function, after the mapping function, we found that to be very far away from the original blue class. So there's an important note to consider here. Uh, what we have actually used is the transfer function uh, or the mapping function given here but there is a small uh, con point that you should know please note that due to the nature of the non-linear transfer function and the selected support vectors used here not all the points with this condition will transform above the current classification boundary that means if you take some points around here you should expect them to be transformed but there is a region that region, if you take any point from that region, it will not perform as expected. So be careful in this case. The important note is the figure shows in dots where are the regions that you will, that will not be transformed into this uh, region above the line here. So this is the region. These are the points uh, somewhere here. All these dots or maybe in between dots also any points if you used as the feature vector somewhere here it will not uh, transform but any points other than that point for example if you take any point any point in the previous in the even if you take any point in the negative quadrant or somewhere here somewhere here other than here say if you point take point here or take point here so they will get transformed into this region and then you can easily discriminate them from blue class to red class so it's a simple example to uh, understand what is nonlinear SVM uh, you can find out different functions for different applications depending on the data set that you have so finally once you use the mapping function we can clearly say, see that even the nonlinear problem has become a linear problem and then we can classify the vectors according to the linear SVM rule. So this is the end of our book, short book for the support vector machines, nonlinear support vector machines. You can see more videos at our scholasticvideos.com and if you have any questions you can drop a line here for more videos we will put in the future. Thank you.